I feel like tonight your yes will echo in heaven. I believe tonight your yes will have great impact if you will say yes to the adventure that God has for you. I believe you will see him like you've never seen him before. Welcome to the Resurgence Messages podcast. We gather and minister regularly for the purpose of reaching people, reviving churches, and releasing leaders. Our prayer is that this message will inspire you to arise for the kingdom of God. For more information on the ministry of Resurgence and how you can take part, check out liveresurgence.com. Voice of Revival does a broadcast um, at 1 p.m. and it's a prophetic broadcast on Facebook Live and YouTube. And they asked me to host it. And um, I'm not really good with technology, per se. (laughs) And so I'm on the broadcast and I'm going for it for about five minutes and then I get a text, your mic is muted. (laughs) All the comments are like, I can't hear anything you're saying. So yeah, that's why, thank God I I married someone who's quite uh, techie, my wife Rita. She was here today with our two kids and uh, had to leave because my son Dax has a big football game in the morning. He has to get up at 7 in the morning and go to the field and and Cassian was like, I'm ready for bed. And he's 11 months old and I like to, I like to share this because both of our our, our, our sons are miracle children. My wife and I, we've, we've always wanted to have kids, but it was actually a real battle for us. And um, so God took us all the way to Jamaica and Karis came and visited, but we were there for seven years through a long adoption process with our son Dax. And we went all the way to the Supreme Court of Jamaica and fought for our child. And eventually by the hand of God, not through politics, not by man, but by the hand of God, uh, seven years later, Later, we got to land in an Edmonton airport together as a family. And um, we had uh, our, our son Dax with us, and, but we wanted more children. And so Rita does her research and gets do all techie and she gets online and, and she starts researching embryo adoption, which I've never heard of at all. And, um, and so she, she finds out embryo adoption is more popular in the States, but it's a thing here in Canada where people can donate their embryos to people who are having fertility issues. And, um, and so she put her profile up, our family profile up in a group. And so I was speaking in Vancouver and somebody had been watching our profile. They hadn't said anything. We hadn't met them in person, but they came and kind of checked us out in Vancouver. When I was preaching in Vancouver, my wife was there and uh, they came up to us and, and said, we believe that God has been saving our embryos. We've been saving our embryos, asking God, who do we give our embryos to? And uh, you're, the, you're the couple, you're the family that we want to donate our embryos to. And so Cassian, now he was an, he, he was an embryo, but he was frozen for 15 years. They have to pay $500 a year to keep them cryogenically like frozen, right? It's like sounds sci-fi or something like that. <laughs> and, and then um, he broke the record at the clinic there in BC surviving a thaw. 15 years he had been frozen. Which is a crazy thought too because we were in Jamaica the whole time for seven of those years. Um, and, and, and Cassian was here in Canada just waiting for us. And so we like to tease our, our old uh, uh, Dax who's this big football player that he's actually the younger brother and Cassian is the older brother. <laughs> but that's a little bit about our, our story. Um, our family is, our, our ministry, TJ, uh, we have a website, tjgreen.ca, but our family is really about family revival. Now you have a ministry here, Resurgence, that is about revival, but re- how many know revival is not just in a meeting? It, it, it's, in, it's in your home. It can be in your marriage. It can be with your children. Revival can be an inheritance that you can pass on to the next generation. It's not just an uh, amazing meeting where people get healed and touched, but it's actually a, a, a life to, uh, that you can live. You can live in revival. And so our, our ministry motto is we believe that God is moving in family revival across Canada and that entire households are going to be in 
encountering the fire of God. And entire households are going to be saved. How did the church start? It started in the fire of God. It started at Pentecost. And entire households were getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were baptizing people in ditches. And, and, and whole entire households were coming to Jesus. And so really that is our heart and our, our prayer and our ministry is to see a move of God in Canada and the nations, especially here in Edmonton, that, that we would be experiencing family revival. That our churches would not function like an institution, but they would start to function like healthy family with fathers and mothers of revival that know how to pass that on to the next generation. To see kids five years old encountering God and moving in revival with words of knowledge and praying for people, laying hands on people. How many know revival is generational? It's for every single generation. And so I'm really honored to be a part of uh, tonight. I, I was talking with Travis um, yesterday, or was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. We were having lunch together and just telling him that during my time when I was traveling and doing ministry, itinerant ministry, only itinerant ministry, um, resurgence was like a home church for me. Even though I, I didn't get to come all the time, whenever I was in Edmonton and not traveling, it was a place where I could come and get refreshed and, and have church and come and, and be in worship and sit in the word and where I've been pouring out every Sunday, every weekend, where I could come and sit and just get refreshed here in Edmonton. So, uh, you know, if you volunteer and if you serve here in Resurgence, I just want to thank you for being a place where people can come and encounter God and, and, and it can be a church for them. It can, I know that you guys aren't a church, but you, your job is to see the churches of Edmonton revived. And, and the crazy, that the, the thing that I love is that's my DNA. So I feel like I'm at, I'm, I feel like this is like family right now, that we're just all here and we have the same DNA. We have the same commissioning from the Lord to see a church on fire in Edmonton, to see the nation of Canada revived and salvations from coast to coast. I absolutely believe now is the time for the church of God to rise up in a spirit of revival. And that cannot stay in the four walls. It must go out into the streets and the schools and the businesses. So that's just a little bit about us. I'm, at, I, I, I'm a locational pastor at the Summit Church West. So we have two locations. We have one on the east, or well, we have one on the, yeah, I guess it's on the east. We have one on the east and we have one on the, the west that we planted during during COVID, kind of covertly in a, in a hotel, and we had to move around and do some couch surfing for a little bit, uh, like staying at your friend's house. We, we didn't really have a location, so we just find locations to do church, and we ended up in a warehouse for a good good portion of our, our, our of the last year. We were in a warehouse with a nice cement floor, and there was kids crawling on the cement floor. It was really awesome, um, but we're now getting into our brand new building. We're going to have our grand opening uh, October 16th. We're going to have a brand new grand opening. We got into our facility and so we're really excited that, get, that we found a home and a place where we can come and worship on the west side of Edmonton. So yeah, I'm really excited about what God is doing. That's a really cool thing to be a part of. I've never been a part of a church plant starting from, you know, the, the sh starting from, you know, the bottom and now we're here. <laughs> starting, uh, starting from scratch and, and, and doing church in a, in, on the cement floor in a warehouse and, and with wooden, you know, making a wooden stage and just doing everything. It felt like we were doing underground church for a little bit. It was fun, but it's, it was an adventure. And so, uh, well, I want to tell you, I want to tell you about my testimony. I want to share my testimony, but I, I, I don't know how tonight's going to go. And the reason why is I felt such a strong sense of God's presence in worship. I felt I, I, like I felt his like his presence in the room, like tangible glory. And, and I and I it's hard to move on from that. I don't want to move on from that. I don't think we should move on from that. And so I'm inviting an interruption of the Holy Spirit tonight to interrupt our schedule, to interrupt notes, to interrupt the sermon to interrupt our lives, and, and my prayer is that we would be absolutely possessed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I, so I feel like a bit of 
fear of God, and I don't want to move too quickly here in this moment because the hunger that I felt in the room during worship was, was palpable. It was tangible. And I know hunger is a gift. Hunger is a gift. God says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for they will see God. Ooh. And I could feel that in the room tonight. I could feel hunger in the room and I know that God wants to encounter people like they've never been encountered before. And I'm saying, God, however we can facilitate that, however we can make a landing space for the Holy Spirit to come and wreck our nice, neat boxes and our <laughs> nice, neat lives, wreck whatever plans we had, we invite a visitation of the Holy Spirit. And in fact, we invite a habitation of the Holy Spirit. Man, if, you, if you're hungry tonight, just put your hands up all over the room. Just if, if you're hungry tonight, just put your hands up all over the room. Just going to pray a dangerous prayer. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Just even in your own words, go ahead and invite Holy Spirit. Invite an encounter. Invite a visitation. Invite an encounter right now with Holy Spirit. We want you, Jesus. We want your presence. This is all about you. Yeah, just, just give some sound to your hunger right now. Just, just in your own words, just say, Jesus. In your own words, just let the hunger in you come out of you. Just let, let him know that you want him. Let him know that you're a space where he can come and inhabit. Let him know that you're welcome. Jesus, you're welcome here. Your presence is welcome here. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We want an encounter with you like we've never had before, God. We want to see you like we've never seen you before. We say, Jesus, come and have your way. Come and do everything that you want in this place. Come and do everything you want to tonight. Even in, the, even in the awkwardness, even in the, in the silence. Like, God, I love awkward moments. It just means I've never been there before and I don't know what to do in that moment. And so if this is a dance, I, 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 I'm going to trust you to be leading this dance. Because I don't know the steps and I don't know where we're going to end up. But we want to be a part of this, this divine dance, the, this divine romance, Lord, where we feel you wooing our hearts. You first loved us and we just respond in likeness back to you. We just declare our love for you, Jesus, all over, the, all over this room. God, we just declare our love for you tonight. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Jesus. Jesus. I have, I have notes tonight, but I, 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 I feel like God's shifting, shifting even my box. He's breaking my box open. And he wants to do something so he wants to do something so unique and so different. You know, in the throne room, I, I, in the throne room, who? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, maybe we could set it to heaven. Yeah, <laughs> just turn the heaven up. <laughs> I don't. I don't mind awkward moments because it's just. It's just we've never been here before. And the message that I couldn't shake is, we, and I was going to share this sermon. I, I don't know if we'll end up there tonight. I don't think we will. But the, the message was, would you, will you say yes to the adventure? When he's calling you out of the boat, out of your comfort zone, out of your life jackets, will you say yes to the adventure? And I've been, I've been sharing this message this whole year, but I feel like tonight God's saying to me, will you say yes to this adventure tonight? Because I don't, I don't fully know where we're going to end up tonight. I don't know exactly where we're going, but I tell you what, I see Jesus outside of my boat, and he's beckoning me out of my comfort zone. And I just want to say, Jesus, if that's really you, I want it. I want to walk with you on the waves. I want to walk with you in miracles. I want to walk with you the way, 
whew, the way that you want, want, want to hold my hands. Do you know what? We're, we get so scared of what we don't know. Humanity gets so scared of like, I, we love formula because it's something that I can get familiar with <laughs> and I, I know what to expect. And it's so easy for us to get into a formulaic relationship with the Lord. It's like, we're gonna sing these three songs we're going to pray this prayer. We're going to do, do announcements. And then, and then we're going to preach the word. Then we're going to do an altar call. What, what, what if God wants to mess that all up and do the altar call right at the beginning? You know, what, what if he wants to mess up our schedule? Because he so wants to encounter you in a way that you've never encountered him before. Because you've always encountered, because I encounter him through a formula. You know, it's Sunday today. It's the Lord's Day. When did, when did Sunday ever become the Lord's Day, right? What about Monday? Is Monday the Lord's Day? What, can I encounter him on Tuesday? Can I encounter him on Wednesday? And I feel, <laughs> I feel like God wants to break us out of formula. Because that's just another form of you know, religion. And he wants to invite us into the adventure of a lifetime. So Holy Spirit, we just welcome you to come and do what you want to do today. Yeah, you can turn that up a little bit. Whew. Hmm. See, I, I grew up a pastor's kid and I was trained my whole life to go to church. And I grew up in, uh, my, my dad pastored a country church and I really believed in, on God. I believed in God, but I believed in him in a way that my parents believed in him because they told me he was good. I believed that, that he was good. It was really my parents' faith and I believed in it. And, and so, but there came a point in my life when I was 15 where I was struggling with depression where my parents' faith wasn't good enough. I needed an encounter with God for myself because I was wrestling with suicide. I was wrestling with depression. I was wrestling with this heaviness that was trying to like come on my life and oppress me. And God wants to encounter you no matter what you've heard about him. And when he encounters you, he, it may be different than you thought he was like. Do you know, like when you read about Queen Elizabeth, you know, she passed away this week. There's something significant about that. Somebody who has so much authority on her life, somebody who's revered, somebody who has so much influence in the world and lived for such a long time and ruled for such a long time. And then she passes away. God started to speak to me about, do you know that you are royalty? Do you know that I've crowned you? You are sons and daughters of the Most High God. You have the influence that Jesus had the same power that Jesus had on the inside of him. I've put my spirit and my presence on the inside of you. Do you know who you are? Do you know the authority that I've given you? And at 15 years old, I had an encounter with God. It was actually in Edmonton. I snuck out of my parents' house because I heard that there was a Marilyn Manson concert in Edmonton. When I came to Edmonton. I'd been wrestling with depression. I was a pastor's kid, never stopped believing in God, but I was so heavy and struggling with depression. I snuck out, came to Edmonton, uh, came into this concert, and I could feel the swirling of emotion in the room. As a 15-year-old kid, I was uh, a feeler. I could feel the, uh, the, the, the emotions uh, of, of other people, but I, it was heavy on me. And I, I, I felt sh I had lost all my friends. We had, we had had a church split and half of my friends went one way and, and I'd lost all of my friends in one day. And as a 50 year old kid, that, that crushed my life because my friends were my life. And I, so I went to church on Sunday, I pretended like everything was okay. 
But inside, I felt like I was dying on the inside. And the enemy was trying to end me at a young, at a young age. And I remember going into this concert and feeling the swirling and the heaviness and the oppression in the room that was just heavy on me. And I, heard, I started to hear voices that were not my own. And the enemy said to me, tonight is the night that you need to end your life. You just need to let the pain stop. You need to get out. You need, you need to find a way to end your life. And I remember thinking about how I would do that in that night. And would anybody miss me? And that night, right in the middle of hearing the enemy's voice, I heard the audible voice of God. And it absolutely changed my life. I don't know if I've heard it since. You know, I believe that God whispers his secrets. Have you ever heard the still small voice of God? Have you heard the voice of God in your hearts? I, I hear it every day. But that night, I heard the shout of God, probably because my life was in danger. Sometimes I believe God whispers, but sometimes he shouts. And I heard the shout of God. He said, TJ, take a look around the room. Who will, these are people who, who I am dying to know. I'm, I'm pursuing, but they're running away from me. They'd never be caught dead in church. Who will run after them? I realized at that point in my life, I never had any purpose and I never had any vision for my life. And I, in that moment, I said, God, I'll run after the out, outcast. I'll run after the addict. I'll run after the broken. I'll run after the misfit because I knew what it felt like to be misunderstood, to be an outcast. I was like, God, send me. I'll go after the outcasts. We'll be a family of misfits. And, and I remember that, that moment, it, it felt like everything paused in my life. Even in the concert, it, everything was like frozen in time. I just was, it was me and God. It felt like there was a spotlight on me. It felt like his voice literally broke depression off my life because he put purpose and vision and hope in me. And I remember leaving that concert as fast as I could. And, and uh, I gathered musicians. I gathered a band uh, 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 and I said, guys, we're going to play in the darkest places we possibly can play. Not, not like a Christian band that we're going to play at YC. No, we're going to play at like the dark. We're going to be a mus musicianary band. We're going to be a band that's going to go to the dark places. And so we're a metal band. I, I was the lead screamer, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was weird. I was wild. That, you know, people are unique, right, Karis? <laughs> and that was just who I was. And so we, we, we played in this heavy metal band, and I'm dating myself a little bit, but I put out, we put out mixtapes, and we sent them out to see where we could play a concert. And we got an invite from this place, um, this guy who, who was doing an underground concert outside of Rocky Mountain House somewhere, and it was like in, a, in an abandoned hall. We didn't know it at the time, but we started showing up at this, that, at this concert, and we're the opening band, and there's no electricity at the hall, so they've got this generator outside. And the generators pump, it, and that's, that's where they're plugging in the, all the cords and stuff like that. So there's no power in the facility. And the bathrooms don't work. There should have been red flags going off all over the place. And then we notice on the bikes outside that there's these like KKK stickers on the bikes and different like white supremacy paraphernalia that people are wearing, patches and different things. We realized we were at like an underground white supremacy uh, like concert. And we were the opening band. <laughs> and so we did something that was a little bit dumb at the time, probably not very smart. But we, when we opened up, we said, we're a Christian band and we love Jesus with all our hearts. <laughs> and they started throwing beer bottles at us. <laughs> they started spitting at us, cussing us out. And we were trying to be metal. So we were like, bring it on. It's just fuel to the fire. We are just young, dumb, like teenagers. We had no idea what trouble we were in at the time. <laughs> And so we launched into our first song, and it was how God set me free from suicide and depression. It was how God broke in with life and absolutely destroyed the enemy's hold that he had on my life. And halfway through the song, we had a breakdown. We didn't know what to do, so we always planned, let's just pray in the spirit during the breakdown. And so all the members of our band, we just start shouting in tongues in the Holy Ghost, praying in the spirit right at the breakdown of that song and you can start to feel the atmosphere in the room start to shift all over the room 
the, the, the anger and the hate and the pain, all of a sudden the atmosphere started to shift. And at the end of our set, we, we did an invitation. We said, who wants to receive Jesus as Lord of their life? A Jewish man, the son of God, who wants to invite them to be king of their heart? And the altar, I didn't know, we didn't have an altar. It was just a broken down hall. Got filled with, with, with skinheads and biker dudes, metalheads, all these people at the front crying and weeping and encountering God for the first time. Come on, that's my Woo. Jesus. Yes. And I realized this is what I was made for, to see every captive set free. My, my first encounter with God, my first encounter with God was, was a yes, a yes to the adventure of, that Jesus had for me. I, I, didn't, I didn't know, you know, I, I didn't know that the Christian life should, could be so crazy so wild, so adventurous. I had no idea. And I'll tell you what, I, it is not, it, it has never once been boring. It, I, because I, I've lived a life of continually saying yes to the adventure. We moved our life to Jamaica. We, we started an ado adoption process in Jamaica. We planted a church on the west side of Edmonds. It's never been boring. It's always been an adventure. I feel like tonight your yes will echo in heaven. I believe tonight your yes will have great impact if you will say yes to the adventure that God has for you. I believe you will see him like you've never seen him before. I'm going to share another story. I feel just led when I was in Sylvan Lake. I was a youth pastor. It's okay if I come down here. Is that okay? Thank you, Karen. <laughs> I was a youth pastor in Sylvan Lake, and I thought, you know, um, I, I, it was at, at, a, at a church that, you know, I, I came from a band that knew how to do lights and uh, put on a good show, and this church didn't have a lot of that stuff, and so I was like, I'm going to come and update their youth program. We're going to get lights. We're going to get a smoke machine. We're going to do, like, a banger youth group. Everybody in the city is going to come to our youth group because it's going to be legit, and uh, I was there 30 days, and we had 11 kids. And, um, and, and, and I remember they, they were like, we should do the, we should go out and prophesy over people on the street and share the gospel with people. I'm like, hold on. You guys are like 13, 14, 15. You got to get a little bit more Bible in you. You got to get a little bit more foundation. This is a little bit like, I, I know a prophet can prophesy, but you're, you're kind of stretching me here a little bit. Let's, let's just have our youth meeting. And, but they're like, no, we should go evangelize. We should go prophesy. And I'm like, this this is intense. I wasn't at that place at that moment in my life. And, 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 they, and they kept pushing me for it. And they said, hey, TJ, we're, there's a revival that we're watching at home. Can we watch it at our youth group? And I said, okay, sure. We'll, we'll turn it on for our youth meeting. So we turned it on. And it was broadcasting something that was going down on in Florida. And there was people getting, like, getting rocked by God. There was people getting out of wheelchairs. And, but, but it was like, I'd never seen God move like this because it was outside of my box. There were people, like, manifesting and heaving in the spirit. And this was new to me. This was outside of my box. So I was about to turn it off because I'm, I'm not sure if this is God. Hey, this is making me uncomfortable. And so I went and, and I was about to turn it off and one of the girls in the youth group screamed and she ran out of the room. I'm like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> and she came back and she said, the ulcer, it's gone. I had an ulcer for 10 years. The ulcer is gone. It's not on my stomach anymore. It's completely dis disappeared. It's totally gone. I said, what, what do you mean? Just by watching this, this, this TV show? Like... And then somebody else, somebody else said, I want to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And so all the other kids started praying for him. And he started speaking in this heavenly language. And, and, and he said that night, nicotine addiction left his body. He'd never needed another cigarette. Woo. I'm like, okay, what is going on to my nice, neat little youth group here? One of the kids got set free from depression and suicide that night, absolutely broken off of his life. And they started, our kids started erupting in the service with praise and dancing and, and the, the, 
uh, the secretary downstairs was ran up to see what the commotion was. And when she came in the front door, she fell over under the spirit. The power of God hit her like a wall. And she fell over and she, she didn't get up for two hours. She was out, laying out for two hours. So I, I, I cleaned up after youth group and uh, my youth asked me, can we come again tomorrow night? I said, uh, I'd be a bad youth pastor if I locked the church and say, no, you guys can't come back. And so I said, oh, okay, you can come back tomorrow night. And so the only problem was they told all their friends about what happens at, at the youth meeting. And so there was like 25 people now who came the next night. My, my youth group just doubled, you know. And, and that night, holy laughter hit all of the kids. They were like rolling and laughing. And they were so, I'd never seen them so free. And I'm still a little freaked out by this. I'm like, God, you're, you're so, like, I'm sure that I can understand the ways that you move. But this is like outside of my grid. What is going on? I'm, I'm, I'm like, should I shut it down? I'm like, there's like, I'm wrestling. And then that, that night at the end of the youth service, they're all laid out and I need the parents to come upstairs and help me carry all these kids out into the vans. And the parents are like, what are you doing to our kids? And I'm like, it wasn't me, honest. I, I, had, I had nothing to do with it. And, and so they said, can we come again tomorrow night? The parents did now. And so I said, okay, I guess so. The next night, we're, we're getting close to 100 people are now gathering at the church. And every night, we noticed somebody was getting saved. Somebody was getting saved. And every night, the, it was like the presence of God moved in a different way than we had experienced in the last night. One night, it was the fear of God. There was about 70 of us laying on the carpet, laid out, not moving because we, we were scared to move. It was like the heavy presence of God. It was silence. It was quiet like that for hour. And I, I, we heard a knock on the door of the church. And so I crawled. <laughs> I crawled to the door of the church and opened up the door. And there were two girls there that were, um, they, they said, we're, they, I, I heard their whole story. They said, we don't know why we're here. We're here because we heard a sound. And they followed at the sound from the beach all the way up the hill to the church, just following a sound. How many know revival has a sound? There was a sound like mighty rushing wind in the upper room. And I can feel that wind here tonight. I can feel the wind of the Spirit here tonight. And those two girls were actually looking for their drug dealer. They were looking for their next fix. But that night they gave their lives to Jesus because they followed a sound that led them to Jesus. So we had up to 150 people gathering every single night and we, there was no sermon. There was, there was just worship and God started moving. And the, our youth group was the, the ministry team. They were just laying hands on, on everybody. And every night up to 10 to 11 people were getting saved and giving their lives to Jesus. There were people from the Alliance Church that were coming. There were people from the Baptist Church that were coming. People from Edmonton were coming. People from Calgary were coming. People from hours away were starting to come and I was like God is this is this you this must be you but I don't understand it I don't understand it one 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 night the the fire of God hit the room like I'd never experienced it before and and, and there was one guy he was from Bethel and, and he came over to me and says there are hot coals that God is God is putting to your mouth and he's stirring up fire in your belly and he's putting a hot coal to your mouth I realized that's that that, that, there's a scripture about the hot coal putting the hot coal to the mouth and I, I, I remember that scripture but when he prayed for me all of a sudden I could taste smoke in my mouth and my mouth started getting really hot and on fire and I was blowing out smoke and I, you couldn't see it but I could taste it that night, the fire alarms went off in, uh, in, in our church building and the fire department showed up to the church 
and our youth didn't know how to explain it. We didn't know how to explain it. We said, it's just, we literally said, it's just God. And they just like waved us off, like somebody pulled the fire alarm or something. But there were so many people who could see heat waves and like smoke coming from the top of the church. Other people, another person had called the fire department and like about our church. Are you sure it's not on fire? No, no, no. They're just doing something. It's just a prayer meeting. <laughs> like warn us when you have these prayer meetings again. Like give us a, a warning before you have these prayer meetings. We saw people from different denominations, different churches, but every night someone was getting saved. I believe a mark of true revival is a hunger for souls, you guys. A hunger to see people saved and encounter Jesus for the first time. I, after that, I felt like I was on a, on a, on a, I couldn't just stay in Canada. I, I wanted to go anywhere that, where God had a mission for me. He had a purpose for me. I was like, God, wherever you send me. You know those youth group prayers you say, God, send me. And right after that, we started taking our youth group to Peru and Ecuador and uh, uh, Colombia. We went to Germany and we started to go out and spread the fire. And there were so many people, many of the people who are, were in our youth group at that time are now in ministry because they were marked at that moment. And I feel like, whew, I feel like there's an invitation to encounter God tonight. Maybe like you've never encountered him before. I remember when we started seeing signs and wonders show up in our meeting and it freaked me out. I'd never seen signs and wonders. How many know signs will make you wonder? <laughs> when God shows up in ways that blows your mind and is outside of your box. The question is, is he better than we think he is? Is he better than we think he is? Is he kinder and closer than we realize? Hmm. I know he's, way, he's closer than we realize. He can't even stand the distance of skin he wanted to live within. So there's a fresh infilling available tonight to those who want to encounter the fiery love of God. I feel like... Uh, I feel like God wants to touch, touch many of you. I, I felt like God was wanting to move in healing too. I felt like he wanted to heal people's bodies. Is there someone here where you've had, uh, uh, I don't know if you broke your shoulder, but like that sounds crazy, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's your collarbone, but there's like, there, you were in an accident. I think it's your left shoulder and you've got pain still from that accident, from that impact on the left side of your shoulder. Who, who is that? God wants to touch you. Uh, God wants to touch your shoulder and, and remove all the trauma. But it's like there's things are still not set in place and you still have pain. You can't move it and you haven't had full mobility. Who is that today? I just believe that God wants to touch you right now. I think it's the left. Is that, oh, there you, is it your left shoulder? Yeah. It's your left shoulder. Yeah. Come on. How many know that God, one of God's love languages is miracles, right? Yes. Can we stretch our hands towards them right now? God, I just thank you for healing bodies right now in the room, Lord, as we're just testifying of your goodness and your glory. God, I just thank you for healing bodies. And God, I speak to your shoulder right now, and I, I declare be set in place right now. I thank you for through the cartilage, through the bones, through the muscles and the ligaments. I just thank you for full mobility being restored right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the great physician. Yeah, come on, pray with me. Just believe for a miracle right now in his body. God, I just thank you for all the muscles, all the bones, all the ligaments being set in place in Jesus' name. I thank you for healing being released in his body right now in Jesus' mighty name. Can we just give God thanks right now in this place? Yes, Can we just give him glory right now? Yes. I want you to test it out. Can you tell, is there a way to test it out? How does that feel right now? There's still, like, there's still some uh, resistance when I'm like going out like this. Yeah. There we go.
Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. It's gone. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's gone. <laughs> Thank you, God, for a miracle right now in Jesus' mighty name. I love this stuff. I love this stuff because when the supernatural comes and it starts to move the physical realm, God, I just thank you right now for full restoration and full healing. Wow, is that like, how is it? Is that 50%, 80%, 90%? Can you give me a percentage? Thank you, God. Here, I'm moving my arm because I think. (laughs) Come on. You say it's like 50%? Come on, can we thank God for a 50% miracle? But who wants to believe for 100%? I want to believe for 100%. Let's press in. God, we thank you right now for your love being poured out over his shoulder right now. And every accident, the, the accident and the trauma from that, I thank you for it being broken off right now. And we declare healing into the bone, into the muscle, into the ligaments right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for removing all pain. Thank you for setting the bone perfect. God, we just thank you for your miracle working power right now, restoring. Just because you love, just because you're that good, and just because you're here right now, God, you are present to heal. So I thank you for a miracle going on right now in your body. Whoo! I feel like heat in my hands. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, for your anointing breaking every yoke. Yes, Healing oil through his shoulder right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. How does that feel? Can you feel something happening right now? It's, I keep on like, wanting to move my shoulder into different like, places. So, yeah, something. Something's happening right now. Yeah. Come on. Well, keep moving it around. Keep yeah. testing it out. Yeah. Yeah. Can you play and test it out? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. How, how many are, are you okay to just press in a little bit longer? Are you guys okay? I feel like God's doing something. I know he's, I know he's moving in the room, and I just want to engage with him a little more. Thank you, Jesus. There was another, I I felt like someone has, uh, this is weird, an allergic reaction to the sun and and, and it causes like a a, a rash or something like that. It's like an allergic reaction to the sun, but you can't be out in the sun for long periods of time or else there's like a a rash. Does that make sense to anybody that your skin reacts to that, the direct sunlight? Is that anybody here? I'm just pressing. I'm taking a risk. I'm stepping out of the boat. So don't, don't hide on me here. I'm stepping out on the boat. But if that's you, God wants to heal skin conditions, especially allergic. I believe it's an allergic reaction to the sun. This is a unique word. So I, I, I believe that it's here tonight that God wants to touch that. Who is that? This is called applying prophetic pressure. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm still learning to hear God's voice, but I don't think I missed it. I think someone here tonight, God wants to heal skin, heal your skin of an allergic reaction. Who is that tonight? Thank you. You, you, you don't know if it's you? It hasn't been diagnosed, but you think it might, you don't know. You don't know. Has it happened often? You haven't been in the sun. <laughs> well, I, you know, you're just hungry. <laughs> you're hungry for God. Man, and so I just feel like I want to prophesy over you right now. There's a, there is a healing anointing on your life. You're so hungry for God. Can you stand up right now? There's something special on you right now. You're so hungry for God. You want it at all, all costs. You want his presence. You want to encounter him like you've never encountered him before. Like tonight, it's like I was speaking right to you. Like I'm the one who wants to step out of the boat. I'm the Peter. Even if nobody else is stepping out of the boat, I want to be the one who walks on water with Jesus. Just put both your hands up right now. God, I just thank you for an open heaven over her life. I thank you for that invitation that you're, that her yes, I hear it resounding in heaven. Lord, you're answering the yes in her heart. God, I thank you. Wow. The enemy has tried to, to, to abuse you and suppress you. And there's been like this ceiling over your life. Like the, the enemy has tried to lie about limits 
that there's like limited, he, he's tried to limit your ceiling. But God says to you, you're like an Abraham and he's calling you out of the tent. He's calling you out of the ceiling and he's saying, look at the stars with me. Would you dream with me and see the possibilities? I'm gonna take you to a place that you, you've you never been before. I, I feel like there is an anointing on your life where he's even calling you to even leave Canada and leave in, into the nations. There is a nation's anointing on your life. I see, man, there's like a Heidi Baker anointing on your life. I see, like, I remember her telling stories about rescuing babies out of trash trash bins and like the orphanage being filled up with, with kids who were abandoned. And I see you pulling in people who've been abandoned by the world and you're pulling them into family. You have a, a mother's heart. There's like, you're, you're, whew. God, I just thank you for a fresh fire. Father God, the fire of your love that she's like a fire that cannot be contained. I thank you for filling her with fresh fire tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Fill her with your fire. God, I thank you, Lord. I see the Lord like paving the streets with gold in front of you. Finances will never be a stumbling block in your life. They're gonna be a building block in your life. He's turning the stumbling blocks into building blocks. And I see lots of, you know, my, my spiritual father says, um, finances is just nails and a hammer to build the kingdom of God. And I see God putting nails and hammers into your hands for the kingdom of God. Come on. Can we just thank God right now? Th thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's, uh, wow. I, I've, I was in Regina and I, pr I got to pray over this kid who had um, color blindness. I'm really stretching tonight. I'm pressing in. But he couldn't see certain colors. And, uh, and, and so he couldn't, he could never do, he, he couldn't drive. He could, he had to get a, a different special glasses. He couldn't drive without glasses. He had color blindness and there were certain things in his life that he couldn't do. And it actually limited him quite a bit, his color blindness. We prayed for him and God healed the irises and the nerves behind his eyes. And that night he got to play video games all night that he never got to play before. Isn't that wild? God just like loves even those like little things, those little enjoyments. If you have issues with color blindness, I, I want you to stand up tonight and we're going to pray and believe God for a miracle. Is that anybody in this room where you have an issue with color blindness? Thank you, Jesus. Or nerves that have not been working right in, in the eye. Is that anybody? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremy, you're believing for a, a eye miracles. Yeah. Yeah. Man, thank you, Jesus. Man, Jeremy, I love you, man. God loves you so much. Whew. I know you've, you've prayed so many times for, for your eyes to be healed. I know you've just been praying. I love your resilience, man. I love your resilience. Can we just agree for Jeremy right now? Let's, let's stretch Woo! our hands out. Come on, if, you, if, you wanna, if you're close to him, go ahead and put a hand on his shoulder right now. Come on, this is a family affair. God, we thank you right now for the power of God to heal. God, we thank you, Lord. Do you experience any color blindness? No. No, that's good. <laughs> you feel, you see double vision from the tumor. Man, so you need a creative miracle. Can you take your, can you take your glasses off? Thank you, Jesus. Guys, this is not about, let, 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 let me just be clear. This is not about me having an anointing. This is not about me calling out, uh, you know, I'm not, obviously, I'm not like the best at calling out words of knowledge. <laughs> but that, this is about God calling out somebody, amen? This is about God loving on somebody. And, so, and this is a family affair. So the same power that raised God from the dead lives in you. So the prayer of faith and agreement can shift things in the natural. How many are in, in agreement with that? God, we just thank you right now, just even as a family in the whole room right now, we just thank you, God. You can do a miracle. God, we thank you, Jeremy was healed. Father God, he's a living, breathing miracle. But God, I thank you right now for healing the nerves in his head that were taken out because of the tumor. God, we just thank you that you're restoring all back to Jeremy in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for pouring out the love of God and the power of God all over him right now and we believe for a miracle in his eye we believe in a miracle in his nerves we thank you for a fresh whoo 
encounter with God tonight with the love of God. Eyes be healed in Jesus' name. Nerves be healed in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for stirring up faith in the room tonight, God. You said it. I believe it. You can do it. So we thank you for, for doing a miracle in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for healing vision. We speak to double vision and we declare clarity in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus, for healing throughout the body. There's other stuff in your body that needs to be restored. I see, I see God touching even the, your atlas bone around your neck and down your spine. God, I thank you for healing all the way down the spine. I thank you for moving bones into place. God, I thank you right now. Even the, 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 the it feels like there's been, you've had headaches um, that has stolen like sleep. And God says, I'm restoring your rest. I'm restoring your sleep tonight. God, I thank you for, for your power. Woo, I feel it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for healing all throughout his body right now, restoring everything that the enemy tried to steal. And God, I, I declare over Jeremy a healing anointing on his life where he's going to see so many tumors dissolve in Jesus' name. The healing that he's been walking through is gaining him authority in the spirit to see people healed of tumors and cancer cancer and all types of diseases. Even this week as you go out on the street with evangelism and the gospel, we thank you for the mighty miracles that Jeremy's going to see through his hands in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's just give God praise tonight. Let's just give him a mighty shout. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Praise God. Wow. Does something shift in your back? Yeah. <laughs> I got metal plates holding like a bunch of my spine together from a car accident and like brain cancer and so I'm kind of a mess so yeah. I kind of needed an overhaul so come on God I thank you for even med melting metal plates out where they're not needed anymore God we just thank you Father God I've seen it where, where Jeremy Nelson prayed for somebody and screws were like melted out of somebody's ankle God I thank you for the anointing that melts metal in Jesus mighty name thank you for whoa the power of God God, all the way down the back, all the way down the hips. God, we just thank you for health. Thank you, Jesus, for movement like you couldn't do before. Since, Yeah, thank you, Jesus, for moving. Is that different? Are you noticing a difference? Come on, I don't know if God can make metal bend or if God just dissolves it, but he can do some pretty wild things. I love that. We've seen him Come on, I want to see some x-rays. Uh, I want to see some x-rays. I don't know what's going on, but God, we thank you for a 100% miracle. While he sleeps tonight, you're doing stuff with his vision, you're stuff with his body, and God, I thank you for his heart. I thank you for this man of God, that you're filling his heart. The God's, God says, who can be against you when I am for you? Who can be against you when I am for you? Come on, just give God praise one more time. Do you know what? I <laughs> tonight I, I I feel like I we're just we're just I feel like a little bit I'm floundering around because I'm like, God, where are you going and where are you moving? But I'm willing to take risks because I, I believe that God wants to encounter us like we've never been encountered before. And I'm gonna do, I know it's 9:12. How usually you end around nine o'clock, right? But I'm gonna do one more thing. And one more thing. And I want to, whew, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, for they will see God. I, I know this is bold, and I just keep stepping further off the diving board and further out in the water. But that's that's me. I, I'm not as polished as some people might think. I'm not. I'm not like a great communicator. I'm just willing to risk it all, risk my reputation to see God move in revival in Edmonton, to see God move in revival in Canada. I'm willing to pray for anybody. I'm willing to step out. I'm not gonna let fear ever hold me back. So I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna do one thing. If you are hungry for God, you wanna see God, you, you, hunger is a gift. If I could give a gift to anybody, it would be hunger. And if you want the gift of hunger or if you're just so desperate for God, 
I just want to call you forward today. I just want to call you to the front. Just come to the front. Get on your knees. Get on your face. Just come. This is between you and God. And maybe somebody will pray for you or maybe somebody won't. Karis, yeah, I I feel like we're just going to go in adoration and worship tonight. Just come to the front and and release that sound of hunger tonight. God, God, do it in this place and do it tonight, God. Like we've never seen you before, God. We, we hunger and we thirst. God, I pray if there are people in this place where they feel dry, God, I pray Lord, that you would pour out your water over them. I pray that you would pour out your fire over them. I pray that you would pour out your spirit over them and that they would encounter you in a way that they've never encountered you before. Jesus, this is all about you. This is not about looking polished or professional. We want revival in Edmonton. But first we want revival in our hearts. Come and burn in our hearts, God. Come and burn in our hearts. This is your time. Hunger sounds like something. Just release a sound out of your belly, out of your mouth. Just release his name. Say his name. Say, come Holy Spirit. Jesus, we want you. Jesus, he wants to come more than you want him to come. Holy Spirit, come. Jesus, God, come and touch us. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this message. We hope that you were blessed. For more information about Resurgence, including how you can take part of this great movement, visit www.liveresurgence.com.